Welcome back once more to our line opinion panelists. Our final topic this week is a proposal included in Albuquerque Mayor Tim Keller's budget plan. It calls for designated homeless encampments in the city, essentially consolidating the smaller gathering spots that are spread across right now. You see them all right off the highway. The mayor's office hopes it will make the city safer, make it easier to get resources to the homeless community. And Tom, let me start with this. Is this a feasible solution to the homeless issue in the city? It's, it's not a new idea. But again, in Albuquerque, sometimes outside ideas don't work so well. What do you think about this one? Well, you know, I, this is the one issue that will continue to define Albuquerque mm -hmm. uh, because it is the first thing that a lot of folks see on their way to work. It's the first thing tourists see. Yep. It's what will keep businesses from relocating to the, to the Albuquerque area. So, you know, I think, um, you know, let's give it a shot. I, I, I kind of like the idea of it. And I like also, uh, and I know it's on the list of things we might potentially talk about how this uh, Hope Village mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, you know, because I think you need to have a public and a private solution. Go, go ahead and speak uh, to that if, if you'd like city. to. Mm -hmm. What's that? Go ahead and speak to Hope Village if you'd like to, if you want to bring that yeah, in. So, yeah, so, you know, one of the items that was uh, sent over late in the day was on Hope Village, which yep. is actually a, a nonprofit that brings in services. It's, it's funded by a variety of different, uh, you know, the Mortgage Finance Authority. Uh, you also have a lot of different nonprofit organizations that are creating services. It's a it's infrastructure, brick and mortar, mm -hmm. uh, and it serves, uh, you know, homeless populations. And, you know, it's really, in a way, I think the mini version of what the Gateway Center is hoped to be someday. It just because it was motivated by what I would consider to be private sector interests, it got done a lot quicker than what we ever seen happen or not happen out at Gateway Center. So mm -hmm. overall, you know, what the mayor proposed in his uh, in his approach of, you know, of funding all of this, I really like it. You know, and, you know, there's so much about this that a lot of us just don't know all the behind the scenes stuff that's taking place. And it's not a perfect system. And I'm not being an apologist for the effort so far, because I think that there's a lot of shortcomings. But I also know that there's a lot of stuff that I don't know about that's happening behind the scenes to address and to fix this issue. Mm -hmm. It's government, so it's not going to be perfect. It's it's, you know, so. But overall, to answer your question, Gene, my apologies for going off on a rant there. Um, I do like it. I think that the mayor's proposal is, is worth considering and um, you know, worth a shot, in addition to a lot of other items from the private sector. Gotcha. Hey, Laura, these empty lots, these dirt lots will accommodate about 40 people, also porta potties, all kinds of other services. You know, the city of Santa Fe is considering a similar plan. And we just talked on this show uh, two or three years ago that Las Cruces has already done it. The executive director of La Masia Community of Hope says it's been largely successful down there so far, with fewer complaints from businesses about loiterers. That's a big deal here in Albuquerque. Is, is this a problem the same in each of these cities? Can we make this work in Albuquerque? You know, this is a tough one for me, mainly yeah. because of the optics of the term encampment. I mean, to me, the word encampment uh, you know, we have yeah. a we have a terrible record or a terrible history here in New Mexico, even uh, as far as Japanese internment camps, mm -hmm. right during World War II, and and to me the term encampment means like rounding people up. The government rounds people up and puts them in a designated spot. It's very uh, well, district. Well, that's going nine. to happen. That's exactly what you're. Yeah. It's going to exactly. happen. Exactly. So mm -hmm. Very district nine. If anybody knows that um, <laughs> that movie, um, mm -hmm. but it you know I don't I don't like that term, and I think we have to rethink how they're referring to these uh this idea but that being said you know we know that there's a uh, there there's problems with homelessness in albuquerque there's no way around that it's right. a reality that hits you in the face anytime you pass coronado park on second and i-40 basically you can see that it's a serious problem and there is a fair amount of that population that just simply does is not ready to be in a home in a structure right. or walls so i think some kind of transitional housing makes sense but how that's going to be set up and where it's going to be designated is, is a huge deal for um, business owners, for residents, um, and just for in terms of basic human rights. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, keeping people in a designated area, like how do you enforce that and what are the measures that are going to be used? Because that could be just, you know, there could be all kinds of problems mm -hmm. um, in enforcement and, uh, and, and, you know, law enforcement contacts and other things. So I'm concerned about that. A lot of resources you're going to need for sure. Rebecca, you know, interestingly, uh, the city of Albuquerque, where the mayor says it's planning on holding public forums to discuss this issue. And this is what really interests me, because I'm telling you right now, this is going to be a heck, be a heck of a sales job. 
by this mayor. I'm really curious if he's going to put his face at the front of it or some designated city dweeb, you know, or is it going to be his idea? Because where these things are going to be located is going to be a huge issue for people. Uh, how do you think that's going to go, going to public forums and the like? Is that the best you way know, to go here? It was, it was, I think public forums are the only way to go. Mm. Um, but, you know, I, I think, um, you know, we've seen uh, Elizabeth Olguin, Dr. Elizabeth Olguin, who is the deputy director with the city who oversees some of these projects. Mm -hmm. Like we've seen her speaking publicly about this. One of the things that, that I didn't, I, that I don't know if it's if people recognize that this is that this is a bipartisan measure. I've heard right. Councillor Bassan speaking about this uh, a couple times before too, and so now it's uh, picking up steam with the mayor and his face uh, um, putting it together. I think there's kind of one thing that we're all going to have to realize is that there's kind of this hierarchy of, of solutions, right? There's the Gateway Center, which is utopia, which, you know, uh, is, is going to be like, that's where we all want to be. There's tiny houses, which um, which uh, Commissioner O'Malley said this this week that maybe, you know, like these, this didn't work out like I thought it was going to and needs right. some more work. There's the safe outdoor spaces, which is where these uh, the encampments are. You know, that, that's um, what they're talking about, like Camp Hope in Las Cruces. Mm -hmm. And then there's also something that the Land Use Planning Committee actually uh, um, uh, discussed and approved and will take to council the idea of converting old motels mm -hmm. uh, into um, some rapid rehousing or rapid temporary housing uh solutions what the public wants and and what they expect after voting years ago uh to fund the gateway center is that they expect the gateway center like right now like that's what we want right now the public expects that tomorrow there will be no more homeless problem in albuquerque and it's not realistic so i think it's really going to be important for the mayor to stress that this is not the final fix this is step one we can't go from zero to gateway center we have to go from zero to something mm -hmm. so that we can identify the the subgroup of that population who is experiencing homelessness, the ones who want to get help. Like Laura mentioned, not every single person is ready to accept assistance. Right. So it's a multi, this is going to have to be a multi-pronged thing, but there are people who do need help and cannot get to help because it's a dangerous environment that they're living in. So having some more options for them, step one, just identify that group, get them services, get them help, and then we can move on to step two. Good points there. Uh, Laura, interesting headline in the journal in early March, quote, liberal U.S. cities change course, now clearing homeless camps, end quote. And I'll remind you, the mayor of Portland ran on the issue of encampments. The mayor of San Francisco is laying out all kinds of tough language about homeless there, too. What is going on here? There's been some flip about how we sort of view the homeless and, and you know, we're, we're, we're sort of past the sweeping encampments out and taking all their stuff and all their shopping carts and throw it away. But we've entered some kind of new territory here where politicians are bending to the will of the public. Am I right on this about clearing homeless folks out of high profile areas? Well, I, you know, this is not a new approach. I mean, mm -hmm. I think LA did this when they, when they established Skid Row, however long ago, yep. by moving people into a specific area, kind of outside the view of fo folks in, you know, the 310 area code, the mm -hmm. west side of LA. So this, this happens in every city. But I think what we're seeing that's new here is exactly what you read in the headline, which is that perceived, you know, liberal communities are now seeing that this is, this is not okay because it's affecting their ability to attract um, tourists to increase uh, revenue for their um, local businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, a, a nexus with mental health there as well as crime. And so I think we're seeing people um, kind of not, uh, you know, not take the traditional approach of, um, well, just the, I mean, I don't know what the approach has been, but it, it obviously has been just leave the encampments or the camps that right. get set up by the homeless, leave them be. And I just don't think that's realistic anymore. People are not, voters are not okay with that. Yep. But back to your kind of comment earlier about the about Albuquerque and the mayor's office and the DCD, mm -hmm. the designated city dweeb, um, I think that the mayor has to be the one to uh, put his face on the, on the campaign. I, agree. I don't think doing a DCD is gonna work um, this time around. Mm -hmm. uh, he's gonna have to be the one that provides the leadership because um, this is a broad sweeping change yep. that needs to occur to address this. And the other idea that it's under a million dollars in budget. We'll see how that goes. All right, thanks again to the line panel, as always, this week. Now, be sure to let us know what you think about any of the topics the line covered on our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram pages.